going to be discussing something that I have recently, you can say, discovered in the sense that while I've been um, engaged in trying to apply the principles of general semantics for 60 years, um, I have only recently actually um, realized certain aspects of Krzyzewski's work that I want to share with you and hopefully persuade you to do some experimenting with this in your own experience. Um, that has to do, as I've indicated here, with seeing the world on the objective level. Um, uh, these are some quotes that I um, took from Wendell Johnson. Um, he begins by noting that you never step into the same river twice, and of course that is Her Heraclitus, uh, a quote from Heraclitus. The, uh, Johnson translates this into reality continually changes, no event is exactly repeated. No two things are identical. No one thing is ever twice the same. Um, for example, you and I are not identical. Um, and I am constantly changing, as we all are, from moment to moment. Every instant, we are different than we were the last instant. So, in effect, everywhere is change. Everything involves flux or process. And it's an awareness of this dynamic aspect of the universe, you could say, the world, that is so critical if we're going to really be in the environment in an um, effective, adaptive way. Excuse me, this is another quote, that our actual lives are lived entirely on the objective levels. By that is meant this level below the cognitive uh, intellectual level. This includes unspeakable feelings and emotions. Many aspects of our lives are actually occurring on this on uh, nonverbal, unspeakable level, and that's where we're trying to go right now. Um, as you are familiar, I'm sure, with the structural differential, a uh, way of representing this is to say that on the uh, lower levels, we have the submicroscopic, microscopic, and macroscopic <coughs> processes occurring. Um, the last being the silent or objective level. It's also referred to before as the unspeakable level. Um, that's, that's here. Um, then when humans develop the ability to uh, use language and to give labels to objects that exist on the silent level, then they are representations of the uh, unspeakable or the uh, silent level. But notice this, among other things, the um, number of dots in the label uh, do not uh, e equal those on the silent objective level, meaning that there's much more happening on the unspeakable silent level then we're able to capture in our words, in the labels that we give to objects. Korzybski also said that we read unconsciously into the world the structure of the language we use. If the language is a structure such that there is a representation or an implication of a static, non-processed, that is the way we will unconsciously see the world. 
we see the chair or the um, book or whatever as static, as, in a sense, unchanging. <clears throat> Um, here's an example. We would say, if we saw this animal, this is a dog, if we're thinking in Aristotelian terms, whereas if we are more oriented toward the uh, Korzybskian orientation, this is called a dog. This, the word dog represents this object. And of course he said, the word is not the thing, therefore the dog exists on the unspeakable level. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, have to, a little technical problem here. We'll go forward quickly. Yeah, blame it on the snow. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, I've got a problem here. I'm going to have to, I think, um, I may have to proceed without this for now. Um, <clears throat> I would hope to get one particular image that uh, well, we can try this again. Maybe I'll, I'll just do it like that. In this case, I put the <clears throat> excuse me, the um, dog on the silent objective level and the word dog on the um, le le label, uh, level where it is a label. Again, what we're trying to do is make this distinction what it, how the world exists on the silent level and how it exists on the <coughs> verbal level. The term unspeakable expresses exactly that which we leave up to we have up to now practically entirely disregarded. Namely that an object or feeling is not verbal, is not words. The objective level remains fundamentally unspeakable. This is what we have to somehow try to absorb and include more fully in our consciousness. There's another way to conceptualize this. Someone else has referred to this experience on the <clears throat> silent objective level as in the flow. I'm not sure, are any of you familiar with the concept of flow? Good, so <coughs> um, that is what uh, a um, psychologist named Csikszentmihalyi refers to, namely that <coughs> the flow involves the mental states of operation in which a person in an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and success in the process <coughs> of the activity. Action and awareness merge. Awareness is on the activity itself. In other words, there's a full involvement of the whole being in whatever the situation is. It's not just in the cognitive level, it's on the nonverbal, physical level as well. And it's this way of being in the flow that <clears throat> I think is a particularly important adaptive event. Um, let's see if I can put this up there. 
Yes. Um, Csikszentmihalyi uses as one of his best examples to me of how to be in the flow is when one is doing something like um, scaling on the side of a <coughs> cliff, rock climbing. Of course, under these circumstances, one is uh, has a uh, is in a dangerous situation and needs every form of uh, thinking, feeling, awareness that is available so that it's possible to then mobilize oneself on all these levels in all these ways to effectively and uh, survive <coughs> under those circumstances. Um, so what I'm trying to then emphasize in this is that it's possible and in fact necessary that we learn how to be, exist more consciously on the silent, unspeakable level. Not that there are either or, but to integrate more our awareness of the unspeakable, objective level in our consciousness. And this is what I have been working on and will now try to help you visualize more fully. What I'm going to do is show you some uh, videos that I made as a way of representing this way of being in the uh, world. Am I running too long now? Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, well I may cut this short then, but I'll give it uh, a short try. This is a video I took in Central Park uh, to represent, I'm going to pause it here for just a moment, my way of uh, developing this experience of being on the, <coughs> on the silent level as I'm walking. That's the whole uh, goal of this <coughs> sense of vision in motion. What I do is actually focus on some object that's somewhat down uh, in front of me and then as I'm walking toward it I keep my gaze on this object so that I'm in relationship with it. So the object seems to be moving toward me as I move toward it. And as I approach it, I can then, excuse me, appreciate the complexity, the intricacy of the structure, the form, as White might say, of the object. To see it in some of the detail that it actually uh, has and to appreciate those qualities. I'll do one more, then I'll... Um, in this case, I'm walking in the park, and again, I will put my eyes down, say, on one of these handles further down <coughs> on the bench, and it again is moving toward me, and the shape is changing. Everything is changing dynamically. Now I'm looking at the water fountain down here. So again, I approach it and have that sense of being uh, in relationship with it. And here I am. Uh, did we get that bird? Did you see the bird in there? Yes. Very dynamic when it's, when it's in motion. The bird and the, the, the waves and the water but now I can notice as I approach the object, the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, details of the, the bricks, the leaves, the base of the uh, fountain, 
In other words, I'm, I'm in relationship with the in, more of the whole object rather than just superficial details like water fountain or bird. It's that experience of being at one with that is particularly um, interesting and I think necessary. Okay, uh, let me just close it this way then. Um, one quick. Um, you can see in the beauty and the complexity of the flower here what I'm trying to get at in terms of the form and the uh, dynamic quality. I'll, I'll read this as a <coughs> the ending uh, quotation. This is from a quote from uh, someone named Janet Funder, who is a friend of mine, who wrote a paper called Colors of the Invisible. She had this experience while walking through botanical gardens. She says, my eyes contentedly traced the shapes of trees, the colors of chrysanthemums, and the perfect lawns. In a magnification of aliveness, I felt myself aware of every curve, of every branch, and aware of every leaf poised on the stem in the air. My body was continuous with the air, and the entire expanse was saturated with the energies of light, color, and movement. The brightness of sunlight seemed to wordlessly speak to me. The landscape was not over there. I was not separate from what I was seeing. I experience the beauty of reality we repeatedly and habitually forget. So that's the concept of vision in motion that I'm trying to convey. <laughs>